Welcome to the third video of my Folium guide. In this video we're going to be learning how to inject JavaScript code into our Folium file in order to add custom functionality. So to get started we want to add the Folium Latitude Longitude pop-up because it's going to give us a great entry point to say do something if we click on the map and do something with the coordinates if we click on the map which is going to be useful in uh, further videos as we try to extract the Folium coordinates and get them as Python variables. So let's add that Folium pop-up right here. We add it before we store the file. So we say add pop-up, which is an annoying word to type. So we say Folium dot let long pop-up and we say add to vmap. Perfect. Um, and once we've written that, we can execute our program. Perfect. And we see this pop-up function is added and the goal would now be uh, for our injecting our code to find this specific function um, and place some custom content in there like uh, replace the insides of this function or maybe add some stuff to it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start by reading the folium file. My spelling is going to be great. <laughs> read the folium file. Okay, so we're going to say the HTML of the folium file starts off as none, and then we're going to say with open that file. So that's the map file path. And we want to read it, so we say r as the map file. We want to say the HTML is equal to the map file dot read. And this gets the entire text in there, so we can now print the HTML and in the console we'll, we'll see the entire contents appear. So we see it right here. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now our goal would be to find this function in the file and namely find the indices. So we can say the F is a starting index, this closing brackets the ending index, and then we can insert whatever we want inside this HTML in between those indices. So let's go ahead and create a function for that. And we're gonna s call it define find uh, popup slice and it's going to find it inside the HTML that we pass to it um, and it's going to return two indices so uh, find the starting and ending index of pop-up function all right so the function has a pattern which we're looking for so the pattern that we're looking for is very simple it's going to be this starting spot so I'm going to paste it in here as a string Perfect. And we can already find the starting index. So starting index index equals the HTML dot find the pattern. Perfect. And then we can go ahead and start finding the ending index. And the best way to do so is to uh, cut off everything in front of it and then find pairs of brackets until we close the original pair. So we're going to find the closing bracket until we're out of the inside of this function basically. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a temporary HTML variable and we're going to say it equals to the original HTML but we cut everything off before that starting index we just found. And once we've done that we can go loop over the temporary HTML and keep track of how many opening and closing brackets we found. So we say we originally found zero opening and closing brackets. Uh, the index at which we're looking at in the temporary HTML is going to start off at zero. And we're going to say openings found, opening found equals false. And this is going to keep track of whether we found this very first opening bracket yet. So we can say, okay, we're inside the first. Now start keeping track um, until the unclosed uh, sets of brackets found is zero again. So we'll say while not uh, opening found uh, or the number of found things is larger than zero so if we have more than zero uh, unclosed pairs of brackets or we haven't encountered the first one yet we want to loop over the temporary HTML and we're going to say if the temporary HTML at index is equal to an opening bracket we want to say found plus equals one and if we encounter any opening bracket at all, we want to say opening found equals true. So that we um, yeah, set this flag to true. So it's only going to look at um, 
how many unresolved or unclosed pairs of brackets we have found yet. Okay, and else, if the current thing we're looking at and the temporary HTML is equal to a closing bracket, then we say found minus equals one. So that way, when we reach zero again, um, uh, we'll know we're at the end of this function. So we'll be here. And then the index will also, and then the index will equal uh, basically the number of spaces from this f until this closing bracket. And with this information, we can determine the actual ending. So uh, determine the ending index of the pop-up function, right? And its uh, ending index is equal to the starting index which is this f, the place of this f, and we want to count all the letters until this bracket, which we just did, which is index. So after we've done that, we can return our results. So we can say starting index, comma, ending index, and we'll return that. And then we can use it, and we can see if it was successful. So determine pop-up function in this sees once again great spelling all right so we'll say uh, pop-up start comma pop-up end equal to find pop-up slice of the html and then we'll take this print and we'll say print from p start until p end and then we can execute the code perfect and as you see this is where we execute the code and this is everything that got printed out and we didn't just find this text, we found the place, it, place in the file where this text is located. Um, so now we can basically re replace it with our own code or anything basically. Uh, it's important to know that every time we're gonna, um, let's say, play this code, it's creating a new folium file, which is useful if you wanna inject something um, like a Python variable into the string that we're gonna uh, put into this function basically. And then it's important to note that once again, if I refresh the file, these variable names change. So this map underscore 23, etc., and this let long pop up something something, these hash things, they change. So let me just play it again and look at these values change. So if we want to replace any code that has to do with the map or with the pop up, we also have to find those names so that we can keep them the same as in the rest of the file. So let's create functions for that as well. So we're gonna have a define find map variable because we need this map underscore variable inside the HTML. Um, and I think we can even, uh, we don't need to find any indices, right? Because we just wanna find the name so we can place it back in there. So let's say variable name. And we also wanna find the other name. So find uh, popup variable name in the HTML. Perfect. So these ones are going to be a little bit easier than the previous one. Um, so let's define this little pattern right, right here again. And we're going to say the pattern for the map is going to equal to var map underscore. So that's going to be only matching with this line. And it's going to return us this index once we find the pattern. So let's do that. So we say starting index is equal to the HTML at uh, dot find a pattern. And then we're gonna uh, once again create a temporary HTML. And we're gonna say that's equal to the HTML, uh, but cut everything off before the starting index. And then what we wanna do is we wanna go look for this equal sign. So once again, the reason we cut off um, everything in front of what we find is to make sure there's no Here's an equal sign, right? And there's gonna be more equal signs which we wanna ignore. So we cut off everything in front and then this will be the first equal sign we encounter. So let's do that. So it will be uh, map ending index equals temporary HTML dot find space equals, right? Because not all of them have spaces and it's nice and it's closer. And that way, what we would want to do is now say that um, uh, we can add this index basically to the uh, 
to the length of this uh, starting index. So we'll say find the temporary HTML plus we'll do the starting index. Perfect. All right, and then it's important to realize that this uh, start starting index finds this pattern, right, which is var map underscore, and it returns the index of this word var, or the v of the word var. Uh, but we don't want that, so we basically want to ignore var and the space. So we're going to say the starting index equals find the pattern plus four. So it's going to move four to the right, and it's going to be the index of the m. Um, and this one's going to be fine because it's going to be this uh, space, right? And it's going to be uh, the ending index is not included, whereas the starting index is included, right? So it's going to work out. Okay, next we're going to return this. Let's say return the uh, HTML at uh, starting index until ending index. Perfect. We're going to call it ending index because the function is already called map. So it's clear. Perfect. Ending index. And we're going to test that as well. So we're going to write it a little bit above. We're going to say uh, find variable names. Map variable. Variable name equals to find map variable name in the HTML. And then we're going to print it as well print map variable name so we can check if we are some indices off let's see but it seems fine right so we've got all the way map until c1 and if we look at the variable name that's perfect and then we're going to do the same for the uh, pop-up so we're going to say pop-up variable name equals find pop-up variable name and give it the html and I'm basically going to copy and paste what we did for the map and put it in here. But I'm going to change the pattern. So I'm going to say I'm looking for this right here. All right, so I'm just going to copy some section of it. I think most of it's fine. And paste it in here. And then once again, we'll keep this plus four because we want to ignore the first four spaces. And we once again want to cut off everything in front, look for the space and the equals, and add the starting index. And then we can uh, return the whichever part of the HTML actually contains this name without the var. Right, so this should be it. And that's we used it here already, and we can print it out as well to make sure it's correct. All right. Perfect, ends with 16, so we know we didn't cut off anything at the end, and it starts with let long, and it does. We have both the variable names and the function that we are trying to replace, so we can continue replacing it now. We can do so as follow. Uh, so uh, inject code is gonna be, we're gonna write to the file again, so we're gonna say the map file, and we're gonna write to it now as map file. And what we're going to write to is, and we're going to write to it its own content, but we're going to replace this section p start p end that we created. So we're going to say the map file dot write, and then we want the HTML until the starting index or uh, p start, and then we want to add, for example, some custom code, which I'm just going to make a function for now, and then we want to add the HTML. Uh, ending everything that's past the ending index, right? P end, which will uh, yeah be everything after this basically. So this section, which is making sure that the pop-up actually happens on click. All right, so this looks about good, except for this custom code function we haven't created yet. But this will basically be uh, the code that we want to insert. And for now, we'll uh, add a console print so we can see some different uh, JavaScript behavior. So let's look at the custom code. Let's create a function for it, custom code. Um, and um, what this custom code requires, right? So if it's going to be this section, it requires this pop-up variable name as well as this map variable name. So we're going to make sure it gets those. Pop-up variable name and the map 
variable name. Perfect. And uh, what this function is going to do is just going to return a string literal. Perfect. And inside this string literal, literal is going to be our code. Um, so we're going to say, give it a tag, for example, custom code, and then we're going to add our function. So I'm going to copy this function, which we're going to replace. I'm going to format it better than they do. Perfect. And after the function, I'll say something like add custom code. Uh, so we know it. we can see exactly in the file in the future uh, what we added. Uh, so I think this is maybe good for a quick test. So we have a function, it gets these two variable names, but it doesn't really use them yet. Uh, but at least we'll see uh, you know, these two comments inserted with our own custom code. So the function exists here, but we need to give it these variable names. Perfect. And we'll remove this print section and execute the code. Perfect. So as you can see, well, we now have the same function as we did previously, but with our uh, custom surrounded comments. I'm going to add a quick space here. Uh, but the important thing to know is that we gave these variable names, but we didn't use them yet. And that is why if we look at this map variable, for example, it ends with F8, which is the correct one, right? Because it's created here. Uh, but in our custom function, we still use something with, you know, ending with CB because we hard coded it here on the left. So we'll now replace those. We'll say, take the lat long pop-up and replace it with percentage S to replace a string in there and another percent %s for the map variable. And then behind our string literal, we're gonna format it and we're gonna give it these variable names. Like so, and then the map variable name. Perfect. So now as you see, this percent %s and percent %s are exactly where these things are. And they're gonna be replaced with the pop-up and map name that we found. Perfect, so let's run the code. Okay, finally. Perfect. Okay, so we have inserted the correct names now. So if I check this map variable, it you know it highlights the correct one, and you see it's the same everywhere. And we can also go to our folium map, refresh it, and we see that it works as intended. So we basically found the code and replaced it with the same. And now we can inject a little bit of JavaScript code uh, that's our own, um, and later we'll uh, insert some more complex code you know, uh, to get more functionality. So console.log, and we might want to log, for example, the stuff that's in the pop-up anyway. Perfect. Yeah, so that's one log. I will add another log. For example, this one. I'll just replace the words, actually. Like so. Okay, so we'll execute our code again and keep in mind that we'll add stuff on the right. So let's play that. Boom. We insert these print statements. And now if we go to our folium map and refresh. And every time we click, we will now see uh, code is being executed and we'll get this console.log uh, of the folium JavaScript variables. Okay, perfect. So that's the end of this um, injecting JavaScript code tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll look at uh, how we can get these latitude and longitude variables sent back to Python. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. If, you, if the tutorial was helpful, uh, then I'll see you in the next tutorial. Please like if, you, if it helped and make sure to subscribe for the next, uh, next videos. Peace.